Hello and welcome to your next tutorial in C++ and today we're going to be learning about how to read to a text file and how to write to a text file, excuse me, read from a text file. Uh, but this is not going to be as fancy as uh, what is found in my Visual Basic or C Sharp playlist. There's not going to be an open file dialog box or a save dialog box that pops up. No, um, you as the programmer, you're going to actually be the one that determines the file that is going to be accessed. So, um, but anyways, let's uh, figure out how to do that. Well, the very first thing that you need to remember to do is to include a class known as the fstream. So, let's include that first. And let's call it f-s-t-r-e-a-m. There you go, fstream. F is, I, I, I'm actually not quite too sure. I'm pretty sure it stands for file, file stream. That makes sense. And we're going to be dealing with strings as well. So we're also going to want to include string as well. There we go. And uh, that's about it. So now let's actually figure out how to access a, a text file. So the first thing I'd like to do is to actually read from it in case it's already been created. So, uh, well, let's actually create one. So inside your My Documents, you have to go to your Your Documents, Visual Studio 2010, and then inside your Projects, find the, your, the name of your solution, your project, go in there, and then uh, don't make a text file in here. Actually go into the name of that uh, solution again and then in here you'll find your main CPP file and all that uh, actually in here create your text file so I'll uh, go new text documents down here sorry that went off screen and I'll call it list so in here let's make a list of fruits I, I don't know let's go apple let's go banana let's go I don't know orange strawberry and what else is there? Um, kiwi. I, I don't even know. I If some of these are vegetables, don't make fun of me, please. I, I don't know. Uh, what else is there? I should probably do some more. Let's just type in berries in general. I don't know. And this is terrible. Okay, plum. Uh, okay, you know what? That's good enough. I'll just do that. So, you know what? Actually, just for future sake, let me throw in another orange. Just because. Because there's, there's a reason why I want to do that. So I click save and now I have a list of stuff. Now what if I want to be able to read this information? So what I could do uh, is first of all, we need to create an instance of our fstream class. So in order to do that, what you're going to do is type out ifstream. Now what this, this is an, a class. You remember how sometimes like when we did BMI for example, I went BMI student1 and this was an object of the class of BMI. Well, that's pretty much what we're doing here. We're going to create an object of the fstream class. And this little i in the front means in or input. There's also o for output. But we're going to be taking in information, so we're going to be using the input for file stream, not the output. We'll be doing the output uh, a little bit later in, in this tutorial. And let's call it in file, just to make it easy to remember then the next thing that we're going to want to do is to actually open the file so now we have to use a predefined function inside the file stream class so we're going to type out in file again and then open then inside of here we're going to type out a string that's the name of the file now before we actually type out list.txt the first thing you're going to want to remember to do is in resource files right click go to add, and then add an existing item. Then you need to go inside your solution folder and find that text document and add it. Now it's been added to our solution, so that's good. So that's just for precautionary measures. You're going to want to do that. And in here, type out the name of the file, list.txt. Make sure it's where I created it. If not, then you're going to have to actually write out the entire directory. I'm not good when it comes to writing out directories and computers. I'm better when it comes to URLs. So I'm just going to go default and just do it this way. Then after this, so this is so we create an instance of the uh, the file stream class. We open the specific file, and now there's actually one little thing that we're going to want to do, and that's to check for error. We want to check for an error, and in order to do this, what you can do is to actually type out an if statement. And then in here, type out the name of the object, which is in file. And then type in dot fail. 
and that's a function that would check to see if the file exists or if it's corrupted and basically if you don't have this little if statement here uh, that eg will execute the code that I'll be writing out for you uh, then your application will just crash normally which you don't want you don't want it to crash so uh, instead of using the C out what we're gonna do is use the C error and that's a special little guy that we can use for specifically error messages and we'll actually learn more about the C error when we go into C++ level 2 when it comes to catching errors from your user so because we haven't really done checking for errors yet um, error opening file something like that and then in order to exit from the program we'll just type out exit 1 and that will uh, close the application without any crashing or anything like that so this is a little if statement in case you know something happens and whatnot and okay so that's it for that so now we open our file we assumed that it opened properly so well how can we go about reading the actual information out of our text file well you know what I'm starting to think that I shouldn't have done the list the way I did just yet you know what I'm gonna actually create another one that just does numbers sorry about that so I'm gonna go new and I don't want to because this is a little advanced I'd rather do just do numbers first and let's go I don't know four and five something like that how does that sound four and five now click save that's import numbers add an existing item I know it's going off screen, uh, screen sorry about that so okay so now we added in numbers so let's actually you work with numbers first and so how can we actually get that information well in order to get the information let's say we want to get that number four and number five so we know that there's two uh, numbers that we can retrieve from that text file let's create two variables called x and y now how do we actually set x and y equal to that four and five instead of that text document well what you can do is type out the object name in file and then using the c in operators remember see these operators right here we used to use the C in with that right afterwards. Well, this time, using it with our in file object, we can now type in X, and then we can type in Y, which will automatically go on to the next line. Each time you use one of these, it'll go on to the next line. So, X and Y will now be equal to those numbers. So now, if I go C out, I can type out num1 is equal to, and that will be X, and then if I go see out again, I can go num2 and print out y. So if I click save and then run this application, let's see if 4 and 5 pop up. 4 and 5 popped up. See, it worked. So um, it went through each line in our little text document, 4 and 5. And on the first line of, of the object in file, uh, x was now equal to that very first value and y was equal to the second so four and five so it all worked out now what happens if I were to just call it number or something let's see this little error message work for us so I'll go control F5 error opening file so it all worked out for us that's really really nice and there was no crashing at all as you can see it was very smooth no crashing so uh, I'm really happy about the way that works so, so you know what I'll rechange this right back to Hmm, you know what? I'm starting to think here. Should I show you how to write to a file first before I go back to the more advanced stuff? I'm starting to think I should. Okay, you know what? You know what? I'm going to go on to... You know what? I'll keep it this. I'll keep it this because I would just be too confusing if I do that. So I'll bring this back to list. Whoops, there we go. List.txt. Okay, so now that we have a list, let's say we want to actually set some strings equal to whatever we typed in. Uh, you know what? Let's not do that because we kind of already did. So you know what? Let's just call this string item. I know I'm just coming up with what I'm planning to do just the top of my head. And well, let's get rid of all these. And let's create a loop. Let's actually create a loop to figure out how many items that we have inside of our file. So we'll actually get rid of all of this. And let's create a while loop. And this while loop will actually teach you how to read through every item of a file until you've reached the end. So read a file until you've reached the end. There we go. 
So what you'll do is use the not uh, operator, followed by the name of the object in file, then dot eof, which is pretty much short for end of file. Then your parentheses, because it's a function. So while it's not at the end of the file, and we're actually going to need a counter, so I'll go count, uh, whoops, no, int count, and initialize it at zero. There we go. And this time, we're going to still access the object in file and input or take from it uh, whatever's on that current line of code and set it equal to the string item. So now this time, we won't have to keep doing that again and again because every time we iterate through this loop, we're, um, item will be reset or reinitialized uh, to the next line of code. So it will be each fruit in the list. And after that, we can go counts plus plus. There we go. And then at the end, we can go see out items found like that. And there we go. So I click save, and then let's run this. Eight items found, so that should be correct. Let's look at this. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that's really, really cool. But this time, what if what you would like to do is to find out how many instances of a certain uh, piece of text is inside your text file? So like, like, what if I want to see how many oranges I have? And that's why I put in two. So let's uh, look at that. So it's a pretty small change. All you would have to do is throw an if statement. And I'll press tab right here. Then if the item, so at the item at that current line, is equal to orange, uh, there we go, then count plus plus. And at the end, we can go uh, instances of orange found. There we go. So if, and then if I run this this time, it should give me two. Two instances of orange found. So there you go. So that's kind of proof that item is equal to uh, each time you go through this loop, it will be equal to whatever uh, line of text is on that next line. So we were able to retrieve orange that way. And in case you're uh, assigned a home homework problem or if you have a uh, something you have to do at work and you have to know how to actually fetch full strings like that, well, this is pretty much how you would do it. So it's it's not too bad. It's not too bad. So um, that's about it. Uh, I guess I could show you how to actually write to a file as well, so let me show you that really quickly. So, I'll actually get rid of all this. Instead of using the in file stream, we'll use the out file stream and call it out file. And then we're going to have to use the dot open naturally, so out file dot open. Then from here, let's call it, I don't know, sample dot text. So it doesn't exist, but it doesn't matter. It'll create it automatically for us. So uh, basically what you do is, in order to write to a file, all you would do is type out out file. And then this time, instead of using the C in little operand thingamajiggers, we use the C out instead. So let's type out, we could type out a string such as first of, I don't know, first number and make it something like five or something like that. Then after all that, when you're done, type out, out file dot close. You know what? Oh geez. I think I forgot to show you guys something. When you're done using the this object here, the file stream, whether you're using the in file or the out file, do this. I forgot to tell I forgot to show that to you. So with the in file at the very end, when I was done with it, I should have done infile.close. I forgot to do that. You'll get you'll get errors if you don't do that. Just trust me. I forgot to show you the dot .close. Uh, slipped my mind. I should have wrote this down. Uh, but anyways, okay. So let's actually figure out see if this works. So we we'll, we should be creating a text file called sample.text, and let's write to it. Press any key to continue. Nothing else to do. Now let's open our little file here, and now we have a little text document called samples. Let's open it up, and there you go. It says first number five, so it all printed for us. So that's really, really cool. And, well, that's about it. That's about all I really wanted to show you. 
As you can see here, we didn't have to check to make sure it existed, if it worked or not, because it automatically created it for us. Uh, and, well, um, doing something like outfile is probably really, really good if you want to save errors. If a certain error happens, uh, maybe you can make a function that will tell the user what kind of error they had instead of a text file. You'll sometimes find that with software, that in case it crashes or something, uh, whatever, however it crashed, it'll be saved to a text document. So that's pretty much the most use you can do with what I've shown you th thus far. Um, but that's about it. So I hope this tutorial was helpful for you, and uh, this is it for level one. So I will see you in the level two playlist for C++, and uh, yeah, I really hope you're excited about this. This, this is it for level one.